Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this one's probably going to be a little bit hit or miss whether or not people like it or absolutely hate it, because this is some more Necros content for you, which people are always very interested in seeing and really, uh, really interested in, but it is utilizing the, uh, the almighty evil, the boogeyman of today's uh, metagame apparently, the Zodiac Beasts. Now, this is Necros Zodiacs, as you see on screen. This is a deck that I uh, that I basically just kind of threw together and then started tweaking with, and ultimately it just started doing really well, and so it was something that I kept testing with, and ultimately really like. Now, the niche thing that Molmarat provides for this deck is the fact that it does provide you a defensive line in the form of Drancia, as well as making it very easy for you to continually make Digusto Emeralds. Now, this deck already naturally makes Digusto Emerald in rank fours very effectively through the Kaleidoscope Unicorn plays along with Manju Senju. So this just further supports that. But as well as that, you can either make your rank 4 with the two Momorats, or you can use the two Momorats that you summon for free as ritual materials for either summoning your monsters like Trishula or summoning Valk. That's the key thing here, is that it allows you to have some sort of play in allowing you to uh, getting into your Valk plays a bit more effectively. Uh, because that is basically the driving force of this deck, is that you summon Valk and use it to try and turbo. That's the main reason why there's like multiple Xs, because it's really hard to hit awkward levels. Like, you want the Xs in here to combine with Colossalus to drop Valk. It's, you know, the magic numbers of trying to get 5 and 3 to get 8, or you can get two 4s on the board with Momorat, as well as being able to search Viper midway, uh, giving you additionally an additional free card that you can just pop off with Valk to get more draws. It's not really that important to put it under the Drancia, as well as the fact that Valk can support your Zodiac Beast engine as well, because if you're just doing Zodiac Beast plays, as long as you can search a Valk, that means that you have protected your Drancia from battle, and your Emerald from battle, and that's just really good. So ultimately, it just allows the engine to have some play, allows the engine to uh, get some extra cards for free, which is definitely something that it needed to be able to do, as well as being able to uh, as being able to hit some ritual uh, summon requirements and keep the recycling flowing. Um, so ultimately, it just felt a little bit more like coherent than the uh, totally Necros build that I put up on the channel a couple of days back, um, using the Gigabytes and such to summon Bahamut Sharks and Totally Awesomes. Now that's great for summoning defensive lines, but it's not very like it's not very sustainable is the word I guess I could use. But this deck, being the natural you know inherent consistency and stability and um, and sustainability of the Zodiac Beast engine and the sustainability of the Necros engine on top of that just seems to be a, a perfect sort of fit. Now, I don't think this is going to be what revives the deck into any sort of competitive stature, but it is definitely something that is fun and good to play with when you uh, feel like you have the time. It's literally, a, it's, it's almost a perfect palette swap, um, extra deck-wise, from the Totally uh, build, because you take the Bahama Sharks, the King of the Fairlamps, and the Totally Awesomes out and put in the five Zodiac Beast cards, and then you take the seven cards out of the main deck in the form of the extra dance princesses, the gigabytes, and stuff like that, and you add the triangles, the Momorats, and the Viper. So it's it's a very easy switch over, so it's not even really that strenuous of a of deck on like the deck building side of things. But anyway, that's enough mumbling on about this deck. I'm going to uh, let it try to attempt to speak for itself in some uh, gameplay that I'm going to be doing on the Checkmate server. So let us just jump straight into the first game and see how well it does. So I'm able to play on the uh, on the checkmate server because I cut Ariel because this is basically a in theory TCG deck. So uh, we have a hand full of Necros plays and shenanigans, and so what we're going to be capable of doing is okay. Glass Bell is the searcher, so I'm not too worried about that. That's not the Terra Top. Ice Bell is the Terra Top type card, and uh, so Ice Bell setting cards it looks like this is just probably going to be some sort of Wind Witch Eidolon maybe anti meta thing. Uh, but as it stands, I'm not trying to use any of the Zodiac stuff. I have a hand that is legitimately full of, uh, of Necros things. And so what I have access to is I have access to uh, summoning the Unicor, uh, normaling Manju. I can actually just Trish him this turn. It's actually very, very effective. Um, I can Trish him and then have that backed up with Valk. Um, but it depends on what I want to do specifically. Um... With uh, if I want to get rid of the Brio for the rest of the game, that's going to be the main thing. But I do have the Sinju, so I guess it is kind of, it's kind of okay for me to be doing that. I think. Um, but so yeah, this will just search Kaleidoscope, and 
Let's see. I can summon Valk and Unicorn here as one unit. Or I can just summon the Unicorn and get a search. Or I can just get a search with Manju anyway. Um, so, I think I just want to do this. Or I can just make the Trish. Like, the Trish is just probably the... It is, the Trish is just the more clear-cut, better play. So, yeah. We'll normal summon the Senju. Uh, use it to search for uh, Brio. If it doesn't get, like, Fiendish Chained or negated in some way. So, yeah. We will uh, search the Brio. I'm going to get rid of the Brio, like, permanently from the game. Which I don't necessarily like the concept of. Um, per se, but I mean, it just, it's ultimately, it's gonna have to be what happens. Vanity's Emptiness, wow, look at this skillful card. Alright, well, in response to that, I'm going to have to literally just sit here on, uh, on my cards for a while. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna search for Exa, and I'm gonna pass my turn, because next turn I'll be able to summon Valk if he outs his own emptiness. He's not gonna be able to do anything other than ma if he makes a crystal wing that'll out my Valkyrus uh, but if he makes crystal wing then I'm basically just not gonna use the Valk <laughs> like it's that should be pretty self-exclamatory and I'll be able to oh wow really Magispector Wind Witches that's definitely not something that I would have expected straight off the hand um, but he's getting a search in the end phase so he's gonna be able to attack with this he's got the ice spell in his hand and one unknown that's a new card um, so what we'll do is we will activate this. I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to banish Kaleidoscope because I actually really don't care about recycling the, the, uh, the ritual spells right now. Um, it literally could not matter less to me. Uh, because what I get to do this turn is that I get to use Unicor to add back... Um, I get to use Unicor to add back Brio. I can discard Brio to add Dance Princess. I can normal summon Dance Princess. Um, so that's that's really neat and uh, key here is that I can normal summon Dance Princess, kill both of these, the emptiness turns off and then I can make a uh, rank 4. Um, or I, do I even want to kill them both? I mean I can make a rank 4 in like Diamond Dire, but that wouldn't be anything too worthwhile. At least I don't think so. I mean I could just easily just keep these things uh, in my hand and just keep going and just literally wait for him to out these cards. Uh, because he's got Mabuku in his hand, which Mabuku will search like Fox or something. And it's just a really slow interaction that he's got going on because he has emptiness up. So I'm not really too worried about uh, the entire situation. But so I'll use Brio here. And I'll use Brio to get the Dance Princess. And then I will also use Manju and get Colossalus to get a, to get a Ritual Spell. Uh, just because I want to go ahead and have all my ducks in a row, essentially. Uh, for how I want this to be situated. So I will get the... I think I'm just going to get Colossalus and not use its effect this turn. Uh, so that I can see if I draw a Ritual spell next turn. Because what I've got in Graves, I've got a Colossalus. I'll be able to discard Colossalus and re-establish the three stars in Grave. For whatever Ritual Summon I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm just literally just going to slow roll this emptiness. That's one of the things I love about this deck in particular. The Necros deck in particular can literally just slow roll the emptiness. Uh, to where I can just make it to where Valkyrus just keeps it to where he can't touch me. And I can out emptiness multiple ways here. Just by uh, doing that. So really, Babuku for Babuku. Um, that's a bit interesting. I'm not too, like, like, uh, I'm not too enthusiastic about it, but whatever. So this will do this. I'll normal summon Dance Princess next turn. I'll attack over this. I'll attack over this. I'll be able to make, uh... Diamond Dire and pop one of these just to clear the way and then I'll be able to uh, Trish and that's a Molmerat which I would actually just love to summon but it's got zero attacks so uh, we're not gonna do that but so we'll normal summon this I'm gonna leave the Dance Princess on the board after I make the uh, after I make the rank 4 uh, because it's going to prevent my opponent from being able to do uh, some certain things uh, in response to my stuff so that's neat and that's good and that's cool but, so from this, we're going to, yeah, we're just going to Diamond Dire. I'm going to leave this cat on the board so that he can't use Ice Bell. So that he can't special summon it and use it to get its, like, amazing effect. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 just how this is going to go. Um, now, if these cards are anything that answers, like, my monsters, like, if it's if it's Storming Mirror Force, I would just be the happiest camper. Um, Magic Spectre Cyclone, okay, that's still out this situation. And, in fact, that's better for me because now I just get to Diamond Dire this and all of your back row is gone and then I get to Trishula you. Wow. 
And I'm not even worried about Emerald because next turn I can just mow Morat. Like, it's not even a problem. Not even a problem. And then I'll be able to uh, do multiple things with uh, with the uh, Cataster uh, that I'm going to search, getting back the um, stuff. Match back Tornado, yeah, see? I'm not even worried. I'm not even worried about this situation at all. It feels so free. It feels so wild and feels so free. Uh, but so we'll do this, and I'm going to get the Dance Princess back, and then I'm going to be able to use it to uh, do stuff here. Ah, how dare you. How very dare you. Uh, but let's see, from Grave, and from Hand, so we'll summon this, he gets to draw one card, um, and this will happen here. I, I kept using this, like, I had this thought in my head that I was going to Trish him, but in reality I was just going to Valkyrie him. Um, like, I don't know what the whole thought process was in my head, but, see, at this point, I don't even have to, like, do anything. I'm going to keep these in my hands. I was going to, like, if the Max C didn't happen, I would Cataster to summon the Dance Princess back, and then I would tribute it off to get a draw. And then add back, uh, like, my Clausulus. And that would be, like, how that goes. But as it stands, like, right here, I don't have to worry about anything. Um, like, he can make Breaksword and get rid of my Valkyrus if he normal summons Mabuku and overlays with these. But at that point, he's lost both of his, like, Pendulum resources that go into Graveyard. Uh, so, like, I'm not too worried about it in any way, shape, or form reali in reality. Because I'm going to be able to normal summon Momorat next turn. And just do my Momorat play to get, you know, Drancia and two Momorats. And then Cataster also just gets to bring back either Exa or Dance Princess, depending on uh, on what happens. And based off of what happens here as well... Oh, Ties of the Brethren. Really? What are you going to summon that's Spellcasters and... Oh my god, this actually summons these. I did not actually factor that in. That's actually a really cool interaction. I still don't think it's anywhere near, like tier status or good but I mean shit it's doing it so he's adding Magic Spectre Sonics which I mean I guess he only plays one of each like one Cyclone one Sonic otherwise he would search like Storm or Cyclone so he could out my Valkyrus because as it stands um, all I have to do is attack over everything here really another Momorat the fuck man <laughs> come on <laughs> come on Alright, I need to reread Dance Princess. I need to make sure that it does what I think it does. Um, let's see. Cannot activate uh, effects in response to activation of a Necro's Ritual Spell card. Okay, so it does not do exactly what I thought it does. But, this is fine. Because what I can just do is I can summon this, and I'm going to basically throw Momorat into, uh, into the fray. Because I'm basically just going to attack over all of his monsters, right? Well, this just makes it so easy. I was actually just trying to bait this, but this just makes it so simple. Because now I get to use Momorad. <laughs> wow. Alright. Um, so now, basically, the only thing I'm going to be really worried about here would be if uh, if he uh, has something like Magispectra Tornado again. Because I know he has Magispectra Sonics. I don't know what the other cards are. Uh, so that's, that's the biggest issue, is I don't know what they are. And that's the biggest, like, threat as well, is the fact that, again, I should emphasize, I don't know what they are. I know there's a Magic Spectre Sonic. That's a Solemn Warning. Okay. So that's fine. Uh, which means that next turn I'll be able to Normal Summon this and do that. But I can just keep attacking over these. Magic Spectre Sonic does what? It, like, doubles the attack and defense, but then it destroys the monster or something? Um, until the end of the turn, its attack and defense become double. Any battle damage your opponent inflicts your opponent is half. Okay, super simple. So, I'm just going to... I'm not even going to risk the fact that there might be a Tempest down, but I am probably going to get rid of this Momorat, just because it does nothing by itself, um, especially with one Momorat in the graveyard. So there is that to, fi there's, uh, that to factor in. So we're going to try and do this now and see if, uh, see if there's a Tempest. There's not a Tempest. All right. And so this can stay here, that's fine. I'd rather see what I draw first. And uh, yeah, okay. So while I'm not leading in card advantage at all, I'm still 100% like comfortable in my game state because he's not doing anything. <laughs> he needs to make a rank four here to out the Valkyrus, and when he outs the Valkyrus, then I just uh, then I just banish for ritual spells and do my stuff. And I still have like triple instant fusion that I can draw. <laughs> I still have all the Manjus and Sinjus that I can draw. I've still got four of those in the deck. I've got so many cards, just one of cards I can just draw that just give me an amazing, 
play line. So, I don't know exactly what he's going to intend on doing here, but Ties of the Brethren on that is such a good idea. I actually really like the concept of that. Ignister. Okay. I'm, I'm so not threatened by this card. I'm not threatened by it. The only thing that threatens me is if I don't if I draw a blank next turn. That's the only thing that threatens me about this card. Because I can just out it. Easily. Um, so, the only thing that I'm worried about is if he gets a Pendulum Scale. And he searched Ogama. So, if he gets a Pendulum Scale, that's the only thing that I'm worried about. Um, but, I mean, kudos, man. You're trying to play a neat deck. You still have the Ice Bell in hand. I need to not forget about that. Um, so he has Ice Bell in hand, which means that he'd be able to get Glass Bell and do those. Instant Fusion. Look at that. Um, so one of these cards is face down is a Magispector Sonics. And I need to remember that. And then the other thing that I need to do is I need to... Let's see. I can... I can summon... I can summon Drancia and Emerald. And that would be pretty good. With the two with the one Molmarat still in the deck, I can make an Emerald. Um, so what I'll do is I will actually use this to go ahead and start getting searches. I'm going to banish one of the Valkyrises because it's a duplicate. And I'm going to get access to a uh, Necro's Mirror. And then I could discard this if I wanted to, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so basically I just need to see if this uh, resolves. Because if this resolves, then that's great. Uh, but this will get Molmarat back, which will then make uh, Bullhorn, which will search Viper, uh, getting another free card, and then I'll make, uh, well actually, it needs to, it needs to be Drancia popping and then Bullhorn to search. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the unfortunate. Well no, because I can Bullhorn search Viper and then put the Viper under it and then do Drancia. Yeah, that's, that's how this works. Um, Yes, use another Zodiac Beast. So we'll make Bullhorn, and uh, and we'll use Bullhorn to search for the uh, Viper after we special. No, we're not going to be able to search. We're literally doing the rank four play. I keep like forgetting that it takes two materials. I'm trying to do two separate effects as one action, and that's not how this game operates. Uh, but so we'll just make emeralds and uh, we'll start gaining resources back because I have Drancia which I can use to pop the Ignister. Like I said, not not worried about it. Now I do have to be very respectful of the impending crystal wing that can come down on me um, as soon as this happens. Really, a torrential here? I don't know if that's arguably correct, uh, but whatever. Um, yeah, that sucks. That actually just sucks for me. Um, torrential. What a card! <laughs> what a card! Oh man, what a card. That card hasn't been relevant in ages. Well, at least not played. So yeah, now he has the Ice Bell that he searched turn one, so that means he gets to go into a one card Crystal Wing. Um, he gets to burn me for 500 and then attack me for... Oh, really? No Crystal Wing? Just making a rank three? Okay. No, <laughs> I'm... Whoa, I'm 100% okay with that. Let's not even pretend like I'm not. Um, and now Ogama. So this is 13, this is 33, which puts me at, uh, at 350. Um, oh, no, no Magic Spectre spells and traps left in the deck? There's no way. I don't believe that for a second. There's no way that you've played through all of them. I don't believe that. Oh well. If, you, if it's the truth, then it's the truth. Now I just need this card, that's obviously Magic Spectre Sonics, to not be anything real. And then I need to draw something that is real. Not instant fusion. I need to draw something like a Jew. A Jew or what, Brio? I think Brio's not in my graveyard. That card needs to not be real. Um, no, Brio is still in my deck. That's a trick clown. That card is not what I wanted. However, it is bigger than everything that he has on his board. So we'll go with it. <laughs> we'll we'll just we'll just we'll play this game. We'll play this game of beat you. Um, let's see. Is this once per turn or is it when it's summoned? When this card is no more special summon, you can inflict 500. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. I was like, I was going to be really ha unhappy if he could just 100% just do that. I've just had to play through traps this entire game. This is annoying. This is irritating. Okay, so Glass Bell searches. That's a nice draw, dude. Amazing top deck. Um, I saw that. It went foop, foop, straight down. <laughs> Um, amazing draw. Do you not even play the level 1 tuner? That seems like a mistake. 
I don't know. But yeah, okay. Well, that one was weird. I'm gonna go in for another game because, holy shit, I just had to try and play through every trap in the game and I almost did it successfully. That was just unfortunate. I don't want that to happen again. Let's not have a repeat performance of that. I am still in the checkmate server though, as you can see down here. Fuck's sake, man. Fuck! <laughs> Come on! Okay, good. It's like, I'm tired of picking for rock, paper, scissors. It's not something I like to do. It's not, it's not high on my list of chores. Lawn mowing next door. Oh, he's playing lawn mowing lights worn. Alright. Fair. Fair enough, yo. Wolf end turn? Okay. I was about to say. I was like, whoa. Wolf set one pass? Come on now. Oh, real, another wolf. Well, that means you're immediately making Minerva. There's... Why do you keep setting cards? You're like, you're like one of those players that I would punish with a malevolent catastrophe like way back in the day. Where like people just set their cards before they go into battle phase and they just attack into a Malcat and they get it all gone and they're not happy about it. Man, I forgot about this card. When did we get this card? I forgot about this card. I know that the OCG's had this card forever. When do we get it? Okay, so he has a JD in hand that he's just summoning now. 100%. Let's just summon it. Um, and then three cards back here, which I'm hoping, well, not really hoping, I'm assuming that they aren't really real. Uh, now, I've got instant fusions, which is definitely workable, because what I get to do here is I've got a mirror, and what I can do is I can go send you, search, um, yeah, I can go send you, search the, uh, the Brio, search Great Sorcerer, um, and then use Mirror with Molmorat and the Great Sorcerer for Valk, and then I can instant fusion into Norden and do some plays. So, assuming that none of these cards are real because it's a Light Sworn deck, uh, let me look in here. He does play Solemn Strikes. Solemn Warning. Okay. Shit, man. Got my ass. Um, so we'll just activate this now, then. <laughs> Sucks to suck, but I mean, I guess, right? Uh, so we'll activate this. I literally have to do something to his uh, to his situation. Solemn Strike, okay. Um, and then next turn, I guess I guess I just have to hope that I don't die this turn, uh, because if I don't die this turn, then um, then I can summon Molmorat. <laughs> oh, I die this turn. <laughs> well then, holy shit! Opens Warning and Strike with Minerva JD. That is so... God damn it, let me look at your graveyard. People play so goddamn fast. That lawn mowing next door was juicy. Even though it only hit one wolf, it still just milled a bunch of shit. Made the JD live. God damn. But yeah, this is this is just 100% game unless he fucks it up. Because I'm at 7,000, so... What are you setting cards for? <laughs> just kill me! <laughs> Please! I wish to go to the next game. Because this one was really quick. So I get to play another game for this video, because I was expecting this one to be another, like, 15 minute video, or a 15 minute game, and, like, that's just, I'm getting cheesed. I didn't even get to play this one. Holy shit. That is so disconcerting. But, I mean, that is a problem with this deck. You do have a lot of normal summons in it with the Zodiac engine. That's why you really want to draw triangle, but I digress. This is not going to be good for the video if I just get completely sweeped. Um, like, God damn it! I'm losing every single rock, paper, scissors. That is so unfortunate. Thankfully, my opponent is a gentleman and has let me go first. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to search for mirror. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to use the Brio to search for Exa. And I'm going to put uh, Unicor and Valk on board, and I'm just going to try and cheese my opponent out with emptiness. Um, that's literally it. I'm, I'm just going to try and cheese him. Cheesy cheese. Uh, so we'll activate this. This will send Arc Light summoning Unicorn, and uh, and then all this stuff will happen. So yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely not happy with the sample size of games that I got for this. But I mean, shit, you can't you can't really do anything about that when it's ten at night and you're playing on the checkmate server. Hey, <laughs> cool. At least it's a little bit less uh, less cancerous than just playing randoms on uh, on the regular server. But I mean, I still am not able to play with like Ariel because of the fact that I'm on the um, on the checkmate server so that is a uh, a bit of an ish uh, but I could use Valkyrus to draw cards here and forego this because it's not really doing anything for me because I don't have the fours engraved so I will do that that's a Colossalus alright and we'll set emptiness and the thing is I can turn this emptiness off 
I can easily just flip it, and then I can uh, then I can tribute off my Unicorn to uh, to deal with it. And the thing is, if he answers the emptiness too, Unicorn is also a floodgate. So like, shit, man. Um, wow, wow, Raigeki! Look at this shit. Oh my god, this is what I get for trying to be choosy. <laughs> this is what I get. This is what I fucking get. This is what I fucking get. I'm playing against a Nordic Beast deck that just Raigeki'd me. What the fucking hell? Mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. I refuse to lose to this. Absolute refusal. Denial. Set one card, Raigeki, summon set. What the fuck is this play stringing? I'm so confused. I don't understand. And I need someone to help me understand. Why can't I understand? All right, I'm just gonna normal summon this. I'm gonna go into uh, go into Drancia Emerald if he allows me to. I'm gonna use it to put an Elemental Triangle in the grave because I don't want to draw that shit right now. I want to draw more uh, Necros pieces. Based off like what, how many cards I have in circulation and like what cards I know are left in my deck is what uh, determines whether or not I send with Molmorad or not. If I know that I've got a rather like high concentration of Necros cards left, I'll leave it in the deck because I know I'm going to be doing like Emerald plays and shit like that. And I'd like to draw Elemental Triangle and do stuff like that. But if um, if, uh, if I know that I've got a low concentration of the Necros cards that I'm specifically looking to draw, then I will specifically send it to Grave. Um, or if I'm just low on resources, like I am here and I want to draw Necros cards instead of Zodiac cards. Um, even though Zodiac cards are almost always like plus twos, um, which, so it sounds weird that you'd say you don't want it, but like, like, I want more Necros cards uh, in relevance to being able to make plays alongside the Zodiac engine because I've got access into it now. Like, now that I've got access into it, I'm almost never going to be broken away from it. That's the thing. That is the, uh, that is the key thing here. But so this has to be destroyed by battle instead of the graveyard to get tokens. Poor bastard. You are not getting that. I'm not letting you have that in any way, shape, or form. It's going to die here and now. <sighs> Unless you have like a solemn strike, in which case, why didn't you strike like seven steps ago? Uh, this thing? Oh, this is the Rota. Okay, I'm <laughs> sure. That's another thing. This deck has a Rota, but it's a trap card. What? I refuse to lose to this deck. If I lose to this deck, then there's something wrong. There is something completely wrong with what I'm trying to do. But then again, this is a very, very alpha build of uh, this Zodiac Beast deck, this Zodiac Beast Necro deck. I think there's definitely a way to uh, adjust it. I think there might be like a better Beast Warrior that we can search with uh, with Bullhorn that might help fulfill requirements of the uh, Ritual Summon a bit better. Like maybe like a level one or a level two or something like that. Uh, it's unlikely, but certainly possible. Uh, but so we'll summon this emerald and we'll use the emerald to uh, try and gain more cards. Now what I want to put back here is I want to put back the Brio. This is the weird thing is that you end up doing this sort of nonsense and stressing your uh, your emeralds. But so what I want to put back is I want to put back this, this, and um, the thing is like I can make more emeralds pretty easily. So I want a lot of Necros cards, so I don't, I'm not even going to mess with the Zodiac Beast engine being put back. Uh, I'm just going to put back these cards, and uh, hopefully I draw something that's not a Colossalus. God damn it. What? <laughs> no. Stop it. Please. I don't want this in my life. I'm drawing so many just blank cards. I'm being carried by the Zodiac Beast engine, but again, I mean shit. You could argue that Shrit carried the deck. Because when it got banned, it suddenly went away. So there's that. But so we'll end turn. He knows I have the Viper, but uh, people are uh, creatures that are typically forgetful. So he can forget that I have it. <laughs> Especially since I've done like four things in terms of steps after I added the Viper. So, very easy to forget. Uh, so this thing... Um, Let's see. This thing doesn't do anything by itself, right? At least I don't think so. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mm, yes, I'm gonna put this under this. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Uh, just because I don't want to get fucked over by like whatever Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro's coding of the battle steps are, <laughs> because 
In reality, if he attacked with this, I would be able to use its effect, equip, and then do that uh, sort of stuff. But if uh, if Yu-Gi-Oh Pro does not wish to acknowledge the fact that I'm holding down the A button, which it has done from time to time, there are some other possibilities that could uh, that could happen where it just would equip and my opponent would kill it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So what we'll do here is we will use this to pop that uh, Vanitas because I'm not dealing with that. Not at all. Not at all. Not in any shape. Not in any form. And I can't really turn the emptiness off here. Uh, but, I mean, I guess I could cheese him out, but we don't need to cheese him out because he surrendered. So this one was a weird video. This one was really strange, and I don't know how I feel about it. Um, but, I mean, I guess I'm going to keep it, and I'll probably tweak this deck around and probably figure out how I want to optimize it um, by cutting down on some things. Maybe, like, cutting down on Colossus and stuff. Maybe finding whatever good Beast Warrior wants to go in. Maybe search off Bullhorn to accent the engine a bit better. I don't know. I think there's a little bit that can be tweaked here and there on almost anything in this deck. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And if you like this video, definitely be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton and helps the channel and community within it grow. But check out the links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might also like. There's a thousand plus uploads over there. So if you can't find another video you also like, I'd be incredibly surprised. But as I've already said, thank you for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. Let me know what you think as uh, per usual. And I will see you next time.